Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video. And in this video about Civ 6, I want to talk about the religion system in the game. Which is a very, I want to say, underappreciated system in the game. And whether or not you actually need to have a religion in Civ 6 to win or do better or have better lighting, because apparently the sun wants to come out. So I think if you come from vanilla Civilization 5 like me, then you would understand that it's kind of weird to have this weird religion system with faith and these weird benefits you have that really seem kind of strange, like the river goddess or the goddess of the hunt or the god of the pasture. You know, all these weird buffs that add culture to a bunch of random things or faith or gold or anything, really. And I'm just going to say it right now. Religion is very, very, very beneficial to have in civilization for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, it's just... The buffs you can get from having a religion, because you don't actually use gold to do things with religion. You use faith, which is generated by religious buildings. Now, it does take districts to, you know, have the thing. You gotta have either a Stonehenge or a holy site, where the holy site is the district. The Stonehenge is the one where it can take up a space next to a quarry. And it does take a little bit of sacrifice to get. You know, I'm just gonna keep turning my camera down, because the sun wants to come up. But... The benefit you get from being able to augment a religion like properly like early on with all the benefits of stuff you want to do is really, really nice. Because let's just take a very simple buff that I, I love to get this. It's called Divine Spark. Now, it's part of the, not the, quote, actual religious part. It's like a pantheon. Um, and it adds one to, I believe it's the great scientist, writer, and something else points. It adds great people points to, you know, great people generation. And it's really nice having that point stack just constantly. There was one time I had a file, or I have a file right now I'm playing, where I spawned in a horrible location and I got the buff to grow 10% faster with cities. Like, that's just the beginning. I mean, there's stuff where it's like every city you have converted to your civilization gets you gold. Like, and it was like four gold. I'm like, so if you just have 10 cities and you're all by yourself and you just kind of don't even worry about going and like winning a religious victory or converting other enemy cities, 10 cities alone is 40 extra gold. And so you can see how this can kind of help you out in helping you with one of the other ways of winning. There's ways to use your religious capabilities to help you win and not just religion. You can go for a science victory because not only does, can you like unlock bu a building that gives you two science, but the faith you generate, you spend on naturalists. I believe you could spend them on archeologists. I'm not too sure about that one, but I know you could spend them on naturalists with help you with tourism. You could spend them on the faith generating buildings, which is nice because then it's just a constant feedback of that stuff. You can spend them on great people too. So like if you want to go for a science win and someone like Isaac Newton is out there and it's like they add to the university science generation, like two plus per university or whatever, like you can just spend faith to get them instead of gold. Or you can generate, you can do the thing where you augment your religion with money and also, there's a buff where if a, someone's following a different religion than you, or there's a, there's a buff that adds combat strength. So you add the money plus the combat strength means that you can go for easier domination victory. So there's a lot of different metas you can do with religion. So I think absolutely, if you want a game where you're you're gonna like win, a religion it's not needed, but I would almost say that it's not necessarily dumb, but if you don't found a religion and you don't augment it, it's a missed opportunity, I would say. Like a missed, maybe you should have done it. Because every time I play a game where I don't get to found a religion for my people, I'm like, dang, I know the buffs I can have and they could really help me right now. Like again, that game I was playing the other day, I really needed a Caravel because I needed to explore continent, more continents. 
and I was three gold short. And I, I just had to wait one more turn. No deals with the AI, no deals with anyone. And I knew at that moment that if I would have built my holy district faster or my Stonehenge faster or whatever, that I, and, I, and I did something that generated me gold, I knew I would have had enough money to generate enough gold to buy that caravel. So I had to wait another turn. So, you know, that, that, it's a missed opportunity if you don't get to found one. But I would like to know what you guys think about the religion system in Civilization VI. I mean, I think it's getting better. It's still... I feel like it's still a kind of backseat system that... Kind of like diplomacy. Diplomacy and religion just suck in Civ... Six still. I mean, religion and there's not enough. I think variety in it, and there's not enough. There's even though you can augment different ways of winning, it still doesn't get deep enough for me to like. I have to actively think about it to do it, and I think that you know once you don't have to actively think about and remind yourself constantly to do holy sites or whatever, I think it gets better. But let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I'll see you in the next episode of the Stream Vlog or Steam Post of whatever I decide to make.